Hello and welcome to this video tutorial about using Exped Insight for SCSM 2012. We will go over the basic features and different tabs within the application. Exped Insight supports SCSM 2012, 2012 SP1, and 2012 R2. This demo is performed with SCSM 2012 R2. After completing the installation process, click on the Exped Insight logo. You will be prompted with a login window. Exped Insight inherits the Service Manager security model, so use an Active Directory account that has the appropriate rights on the Service Manager side to log in to Exped Insight. Before we begin with the tabs, it's important to note a few options available that impact the entire experience. As a user, you can select the depth and time span of the data you need to work with. Naturally, the less you ask for, the faster the load times will be. The first option is the dataset mode, which narrows the state of work items we are interested in. The second is the load mode, which defines the work item categories we require. And the third is the history, which narrows down the time span we want to analyze. To begin using Exped Insight, we will need to connect to SCSM first by going to File and then Connect. Now we will explore the first tab, which is the Dashboard. The layout of the Dashboard can be adjusted from the Options menu under Tools, then Chart Layouts. We can select from six different layouts for the Dashboard. Each chart area is configured separately along three dimensions, two data dimensions and one time dimension. Multiple types of charts are available for selection as well. In this case, we are charting ticket types according to their categories. Clicking on any data set reveals the underlying data that construct that set so right now we are looking at 46 problems of category facilities. This feature allows for quick drill down into the underlying data within the dashboard. The next tab is Work Items. This tab allows you to quickly sort through work items in SCSM and find the events that are of most interest to us. For example, if we are interested in incidents of Priority 4 and Status Active, all we need to do is drag the three column heads upwards. So type Priority and Status. This way we can quickly drill down to incidents of Priority 4 and Status Active. Clicking on a work item opens the detailed view which is similar to the experience inside the SCSM client. Next is the Time Management tab. which is designed to display the time conflicts and workload distribution amongst analysts or support groups. We begin using this tab by selecting the scope. Team members, support groups, or both. In this case, we will work with team members. Then the work items we want to include in this analysis. In this case, it's all items. And finally, the analyst we are concerned with. Clicking on Update reveals the required information. On the left-hand side are the tickets assigned to this individual, and on the right-hand side we see the time allocations for each assigned ticket. In this example, we clearly see that the analyst is overloaded with many concurrent ticket assignments.
The next view is the Priority List view. This view allows us to select users or configuration items and monitor these selected objects for any ticket generation activity. So in this case, we are interested in configuration item PD0601, a personal computer. We immediately see that this PC is the source of many tickets. This view allows us to track critical users or assets for any tickets they generate. The next tab is the SLA Monitor tab. This tab has two sections, a top part and a lower part. The lower part shows us tickets that have already breached their SLOs. This part can be set to Auto Hide from here. The top part allows us to foresee upcoming breaches, so in this case we're looking at work items that will breach SLO within the next few hours. Sliding the bar to the right allows us to extend our forecasting horizon. The last two tabs are Relationship Analysis tabs. They display how elements within SCSM are related. The Ticket Dependencies tab allows us to view all the relationships between tickets. Relationships in SCSM can be established according to parent-child relationships or related items. We will select Related Items here and click Update. By selecting any ticket, we can expand it to look at the other tickets this item is associated with. So in this case, CR1106 is related to four other tickets via Related Items Relationships. The last tab is the Activity Status tab. This tab allows us to view the underlying activities within each ticket. So for example, if we have a multi-step workflow and are interested in knowing at which stage of the workflow the ticket is at right now, we would use this view to find this information. So in this case, if we look at CR1352, we expand and find two activities inside it, a review activity and a manual activity. The review activity status is in progress, while the manual activity is in pending state. Expanding the activities reveals the details about individuals responsible for the activity. This view gives us the power to pinpoint where workflows are within their cycle and who is the person currently handling them. With this, we conclude this demo of Expit Insight. Please visit our webpage at www.expit.com for any assistance with Insight or suggestions.